Hello everyone and welcome back to more Knowing Wheel where today yes we're back with yet another F1 2022 car reveal. This time round we're here with the all new Ferrari. As always I'm joined by Jamie. How, how are we getting on mate? I'm very good yep. All, all well and you, good in my world. All well and good in the hood. You may notice behind me uh, things are a little bit different. It's going to be a bit of an experimental podcast today. I'm actually in a completely different house and I've just had to go out and buy headphones and all this, that and the other. It's been a bit of a mess, but the things I do for content uh, for you guys, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be a bit quiet over the next couple of days, but we're still going to try and smash through, you know, no one wheel is a priority, so yeah, fingers crossed today we can have a bit of a discussion then about the all new Ferrari. Now, we've been hyping up Ferrari as we head into this year, haven't we, Jamie? Yeah. We, we believe <laughs> they're back. Yeah. The car is a good sign of that, we hope. I think it is. Certainly people who know what they're talking about seem to be quite excited by it. So hopefully it's a good sign. Everything seems to be falling into place for a dominant Ferrari season. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait and see about uh, Ferrari. Yeah, it's it's been a while since they dominated an F1 yeah. season. <laughs> it's, it's safe to say. But, you know, sort of looking at the car, though, obviously we had a couple of leaks yesterday. It does appear that the leaks were, in fact, correct. That's not necessarily a bad thing, though, is it? Th this car looks pretty fire. Yeah, I really, really like it. It's definitely my favourite so far. Um, yeah. Parks back to yeah. the 90s Ferraris that, even though they weren't very good at actually going fast, they were very good the to look at. The 641. I don't know what. The 641 is what I'm thinking it? of. That was the 1990 car that Alain Prost mm. uh, decided he'd turn in on Ayrton Senna at Turn 1 at Suzuka. Well. Definitely, <laughs> definitely not Senna trying to go Senna for a Senna. killing Prost and getting away with it. Well, not quite, but it was it was redemption for the year before yeah, where Frost tried to do it to him. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, it looks like an interesting concept though coming from yeah, Ferrari. very different, and different, very different from other cars we've seen so far. Um, it definitely isn't the FIA car. I think we're safe to say they will absolutely have more to show when we get to actual race venues. But yeah, just the shape of the car looks so good. I I absolutely love it. Specifically, I'm sure everyone's seen the the mental side pods. Um, I obviously don't know anything about aerodynamics, but they must have a very good reason for that. And it's so aggressive; it just looks really good. So yeah. Yeah, I'm so I'm trying to look at it. When you sort of look at the front wing, obviously it's not particularly great because all the front wing is black. Yeah. But I'm guessing because a lot of teams obviously have got quite wide, but sorry, no, not particularly wide, but quite deep side pods. When you look at it, sort mm. of face on, it really looks like Ferrari is trying to push all the air quite high up over the suspension. Yeah. into the side pods doesn't it in comparison and I'm, to be honest I think the big thing for me the first thing I noticed was just how aggressive the nose looks in comparison yeah. to other cars it really comes to a point doesn't it which other yeah, teams yeah. haven't done quite as much I just think I, there was a picture tweeted by a journalist from the back from behind the Ferrari and the, the side pods they dip down so far like yes, it's something I've never yeah. seen something like the like of which but yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's amazing we've <laughs> We've got the cheese grater as well, though, yep. courtesy of Aston Martin, uh, which is interesting it's less to see. prominent, which is okay. I don't Less I don't prominent, particularly... I think, from the camera angles yeah. we've been given, because it does seem, yeah, like you said, obviously, with the side pods sloping down so aggressively, it does seem like, yeah, they are still interestingly positioned, actually, as I study the car yeah. more and more. It's an aggressively weird car, this. I really like the look of it. Looking I, at it more and more. The one thing I would love is if the numbers were in white. On the back yes, and the that was the next thing I was going to say. The livery looks brilliant, but what is it with teams so far this year and not putting their numbers in a good colour? Yeah, McLaren's one looks very bad, and that's the font doesn't help the McLaren. But if the no, Ferrari, no. even if they were like, I don't know, a black outline and white centre, that would look so much better. But yes. overall, I do really rate it. That would be the one thing I'd change. Yeah, because I mean considering the sponsors they've got as well, it's very, very difficult unless you're, I think, Holden Back, no, it was Ford back in the Australian supercars. You won't know this, Jamie. No, no idea. That is, I think, the only good-looking car with shell logos I've seen before <laughs> now. Yeah. It, it, it's just not a good logo. The to shell logo is very uh, difficult to get onto a car well. Yes. So. Yeah. But fair play, but, this does look fair. I do like it a lot. Exactly, exactly. I mean, some big, big sponsors obviously coming back to Santander. Ferrari as well this year. You know, Santander, the big one. Uh, AWS as well, so clearly they're going to put Ferrari at 11 <laughs> out of 10 on all the analytics, and you know, it's still going to mean as little as it always has done, but 
this could be the real deal, Jamie. Are we looking at the 2022 championship winning car in its first it first would be great if shots. we are. I don't know what it is about Ferrari. I just like them this year. I think yeah, they're easy odd, to they're easy to laugh at when they're doing badly, but there's something nice about Ferrari doing well. And the thing is, as well, like neither of us are Ferrari fans. No, we we can never try to claim we are, but we can completely accept there is certainly a big place in the sport for Ferrari. Still. Yeah, and well, we you, after uh, a couple of years they've had. If you listen to Sebastian Vettel, everyone's a Ferrari fan. So. Well, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> apparently. He was such a big Ferrari fan, he decided to take his off road in at Hockenheim. <laughs> wow. And all the Ferrari fans have now clicked off the video. Well done. <laughs> yep. There we go. That's them gone. Goodbye. Um, yeah. The, like we said, though, Ferrari, you know, after a couple of really rough seasons recently, I think for us as well, we're kind of quite inspired. I'm not. I mean, would we, would we say we're Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz fans, particularly? Uh, I don't think fans. Like I, I don't dislike them. I enjoy when they do well. I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't call myself a fan, but no, yeah, exactly. I like to I see think... them succeed. Yeah, and this is the thing, isn't it? Because we both rate Charles Leclerc is definitely in different gravy yeah. categories, isn't he? And the fact Carlos Sainz, he got lucky on a couple of occasions. We hyped him up a lot last year, but he did match him at the end of the day over the course of a season. Yeah, and that was really, really impressive to see. I still am going to say, for now, until George Russell's sort of had a few races in the Mercedes, Ferrari go into this year with the strongest lineup on the grid. I'd agree with that. Yeah. I think they've got a super high level driver in Leclerc. Yeah. And he's partnered with a very, very good second driver in Science. And I think you look at Mercedes and Red Bull, and they've both got a driver probably better than Leclerc, but in that top level category in Hamilton and Verstappen but the yes, second driver yeah. there's a little some more doubts I think science is definitely the best out of the three top team second drivers if you get what I mean it's so odd isn't it because I mean if we'd said that two years ago we'd have said Perez is way better than science I don't know I think Perez, Perez has always won. been Perez solid Perez 2020 Perez was incredible you can't yeah, but 2020 you science was also incredible people just slept on him yeah very true as well I think Dep- it depends on sort of what car Red Bull can give next year, but it does yeah, seem yeah. like Ferrari are a team that have either got two drivers that have a similar style, or a car that is very adaptable as well yeah. last year, which I think is important. Um, speaking though, obviously, like we said, P6 in 2019, uh, 2020, sorry, obviously after a disastrous year. P3 again last year. Ferrari came on strong, and then as we got towards the winter break, we heard more and more stories, didn't we, that they found this extra engine performance. They found this. They found that. <laughs> there is so much hype behind them yeah. going into this year. Are we going to see another Ferrari blunder, Jamie? It would be ever so Ferrari for them to mess this right up. Yes. I I really hope. I don't know. You get the feeling around Ferrari that the way they ran themselves in 2021 was very un-Ferrari-like in that it actually was successful for, with the car they had. Yes. So, it was almost like because they weren't fighting for a title the pressure was off a bit wasn't yeah. it yeah like you feel like hopefully they could just carry that on and their car is capable of fighting at the front but there's something about ferrari where you always have that little bit of doubt in the back of your mind that something stupid is going to happen yes yeah i mean we, we could be looking at a car that finishes seventh next yeah. year couldn't we <laughs> this is just peak ferrari mm. at the end of the day and this is again the other thing i wonder over the next few years are we going to see Ferrari struggle more because of the budget cap? If they can't create a championship winning car with half a billion pounds <laughs> to spend, what are they going to be able to do with a quarter yeah, of that budget? When everyone else has got the same money as them, what are they going to do? I think they'll be fine. Like, the thing is with Ferrari, you always know that even if they do have an off year or an off couple of years, they're going to bounce back, aren't they? You see the likes of McLaren and yes. Williams who have a history that's probably lesser history than Ferrari, but getting on for it. But there's no guarantee that they're going to bounce back. With Ferrari, you always know that in a five-year spell, just they're going to have one or two years of being at the front, generally. We say that, though, Jamie. I mean, they went 21 years without a title, between 79 and, 90, and 2000, sorry. Yeah, but then there were spells of that fighting at the front and messing it up. Not many. Yes. But... Yeah, very true, very true. Um, yeah, it's just always difficult to know isn't it With because again obviously you say that they always get back to the front but that was always because they could just throw insane yeah. amounts of money around yeah 
So, speaking and going back to the driver lineup for Ferrari in 2022, obviously probably giving us the most hope, Jamie. The closest teammate rivalry in 2021, who do you think is going to come out on top this year? I think I would back Leclerc. I think we've been fairly clear that the the points difference last year favoured science, obviously, but basically every other metric Leclerc was ahead on. Um, and yeah, hopefully when they're like in a title fight, I would always back Leclerc just because he's got that experience of being at the front before. Science I was going to say, yeah, Science race. has been in Formula One. Long yeah, I know he's been in Formula One, <laughs> but like he's fought Science's a yeah, midfield yeah. merchant completely, whereas Leclerc's had the experience of fighting at the front in 2019. Um, less so any other time, but he's got a, he's very good at qualifying, obviously. Um, and yeah, I think I would back him over the course of a season. Yeah, and I think it's going to be very, very interesting this year because. This could be the year, isn't it, that Ferrari then realise having two drivers that were so similar on pace last year could become very, very difficult. Because I, th- I'm with you. I think Leclerc is going to come out this year, and he is going to want to try and slap Sainz and really yeah. sort of prove the doubt is wrong. Like it was Whether all quite. Happen, it was quite harmonious last year on the outside. Yes. But you've got to think that Leclerc was not happy about losing no. in the points battle to Sainz last year. Exactly, and you sort of wonder, obviously, again, with how that plays in Maranello as well, obviously, you know, it is just a very, very much a pressure cooker situation. Yeah. It always has been, it always will be. If Sainz can match him again, there's got to start being questions raised about who should be the number one, isn't it? Yeah. Or will we see Leclerc just get a lot of preferential treatment? Yeah, it will, I think Ferrari are those, one of the teams that always prefers to have a number one driver, and they will back Le- yes. Leclerc for sure. But... I think if Sainz can, against the odds, like match him, be beating him, there's going to be some difficult conversations in Maranello. (laughs) Yes, yeah. And I think that as well, obviously, comes down to the fact, you know, Leclerc is a very, very good driver, but he still is quite reckless. He's very inconsistent sometimes, yeah. He's got to get that consistency into his driving style. Exactly, exactly. And he's actually got to try and finish a Monaco Grand Prix as well. (laughs) That's a big one for him. Well, he's starting would be an improvement last year, to be fair. Yes, yeah, very, very true. But Leclerc needs a... Uh, it, I mean, it will be poetic because he will win a Monaco Grand Prix. At some You'd point. imagine so. He's very good. He's very quick run there. I, I yeah. almost said good, but I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> yeah, he can get he can get a qualifying lap Yeah. In. There's no arguing against that. I mean, I would argue Leclerc now on raw pace could be the best qualifier in F1. He's certainly up there. Yeah, his. I think what twenty nineteen he was got the most poles in. Yep. Not the fastest car, probably maybe just about the fastest car in qualifying. Over the yeah, and, of the and he got he got pole up pretty much every track he should have done, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, and Which I think important with Max, I think he's certainly come on in qualifying in twenty twenty one, but before yes. that he was often on the bad end of luck or bad end of making mistakes at key moments in qualifying, but. The Chloe haven't seen that from him at all. I, no, I guess apart no. from Monaco last year, where he did it. And Baku, <laughs> 2019. Yeah, he can be a little bit wild on those old street circuits. But come on, then, Jamie, bold prediction yeah. for Ferrari <laughs> in 2022. How big are we this, going? <laughs> this is going to go spicy, I reckon. Well, poles and wins, I would back them for a lot. A lot. Yeah, I think that's right, not actually okay. a number. I poles. How many races are 23? 23 races. I'll go. 13 pole positions Ooh. and I'll go 10 wins 10 them. wins yeah are you so are you, where, where are you saying they finish then in the championship well I hope it's very close but first or second I would back them in the now come on you got to pick one if they win 10 races there's 13 other races I'll, I'll go from for the win it why not James said it then. <laughs> He's going for a Ferrari World Championship in 2022. Drivers and constructors? Uh, just constructors. This is just completely top of my head. We go Max Champion, Ferrari, two and four in the championship. Okay. And, set, and first overall in the constructors. Right, okay. Interesting. As a spoiler Interesting. for our prediction video. <laughs> yep, there we go. That's that's in the books now, Jamie. You can't contradict yourself. No. Nope. I've had to carry on repping Williams all winter. <laughs> I am going to say then, again, I think they're going to be very, very quick in qualifying. I'm going to go 12 pole positions, but seven race victories. Fair enough. 
I'm guessing not a championship then if they're only winning seven races. Second in the constructors, second and fourth in the drivers. Interesting. I will look forward to seeing how our uh, predictions play out in the yes, actual yeah. we're going to do a podcast in a few weeks time probably close to the start of the season about the whole 20 driver list so i'm sure that'll be interesting yeah. that that's going to get spicy as well i yeah. think livery rating out of 10 then jamie just before we finish off i'll go from nine and a half i really like Ooh, it I, there if we the go, numbers then. were white it would be a 10 yes very <laughs> very true i'm gonna go with a nine personally just because I mean it's not really against Ferrari either because they've really done a miracle job with it but it's just those shell logos as well for me Fair. just bring it back slightly which again I know there's nothing they can do with that but yeah um, but if you guys have enjoyed anything else to add Jamie before I, before I decide I'm going to finish this uh, I don't think so no Ferrari world champions 2022 <laughs> let Jamie us know what you now. think about Ferrari's livery and chances in 2022 yep that's a very very good point so yeah let us know down in the comments below your rating for the Ferrari livery, what you think Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz are going to be able to do with this thing in 2022. But thank you all so much, as always, for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed. As always, there will be links down below as well. Obviously, Spotify, F1, Merch, Manscaped as well. Plenty of links for you guys to go check out if you want to help support the channel and continue knowing Will. But yeah, we'll be back, obviously, tomorrow with reacting to the Mercedes reveal. And then we've got some big, big news to get into as well next week that all got announced today. Things are getting spicy. Jamie 2022 can't come soon enough. No, it cannot. Thank you all, and we'll see you in the next one.